Uh, my thoughts on moving forward, let me first of all say what some of the major achievements of, of this administration and on thoughts on moving forward. I think generally, when you look at this administration, there are a lot of things it hasn't done. But no government does everything in four years. So that's not news. But there are so many things this administration has done that, has never, that have never been done in this country, in the history of this country. So we have moved forward in many, many areas. And I can give in different sectors, whether you're talking about uh, job creation, you're talking about uh, uh, micro, small and medium enterprises, you're talking about diversifying the economy, you're talking about industrialization, you're talking about trade, you're talking about attracting investment to the country. It's the first time in the history of this country that Nigeria will appear on, on, the, on the list of ONTAG as the number one destination for investment in Africa for two years consecutively in the last three years, despite what you hear. It has never happened. We have mobilized more than 99 billion investment into the economy in terms of pipeline investment. Has never happened. We never had an industrial plan for this country to diversify. Every government talked about economic diversification. No government did anything about it. This is the first time in the history of Nigeria that we have a comprehensive plan to diversify the economy under the Industrial Revolution Plan. And today, I can tell you the 13 items that will replace oil going forward has never happened in the history of this country. When you look at the SME sector, nobody cared about the youth, the, the traders on the streets, the, actually the people who drive this economy. Only 8% of them got loans to the, to the government. No business support services for them. No infrastructure development for them. Nothing was done for them. This is the administration for the first time in the history of this country that we have an SME council chaired by the vice president and that we address all those issues. Let me talk about three things that I think are fundamental uh, and because these three issues have been raised in the election and all that. And Nigerians need to know. The first one is about job creation, which is important to every Nigerian and should influence the way Nigerians vote. If you look at in the last at least five or six years, the unemployment rate has been always, had always been over 20%. No government took deliberate steps to address this. This government, under the leadership of President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, has done quite a lot of groundbreaking, game-changing things in the sector. And i give you some examples. For the first time in, this, in the history of this country, we have a job board chaired by the Vice President with all the sectors that actually employ a lot of people as members of that. The second thing which has been done is the fact that we now have a way of measuring jobs created in the country. No government ever had. I can tell you confidently today that this government in a year created 1.3 million jobs, according to MBS. Now, if you look, if you look at other statistics, maybe it's as high as 2.8, but let's go with the MBS numbers. I can tell you that it created 1.3 million, and I, I can tell you where these jobs have been created. For the first time in the history of this country, we have activated the job centers in all the states of the Federation. That's, that was activated about a week or two ago. We're going to have them in 774, 774 local governments. Now, we're also doing job exchange. This is a system where the youth can go into the system. Those looking for jobs can also look at it look at the skills, the, the match it with the requirements, and get that done. Again, for the first time in the history of this country, we have embarked upon a job, a skills gap assessment. Because everywhere you go, there are jobs, but there are no skills. Our universities are not producing enough uh, graduates for the economy. We have partnered with UNIDO, and this is what advanced countries have done. It will tell us in each sector what the requirements are, the gaps there and the skills gap. This we inform the universities, we inform the polytechnics, and we also inform the ITF uh, training institute to train people and make sure that those gaps are filled. So for example, if you look at Brazil, you look at the, the gap today, where well, you look at where investments are going. I've, I've talked about attracting 59 billion investment. We have policies on sugar, we have policies on auto. We need auto engineers. 
Dangote is investing about four, $9 billion in an integrated petrochemical plant. We need petrochemical engineers, at least 5,000 of them in the next three years. So you need to plan ahead. We never had that way of doing that in the country. For the first time in the history of this country, we now have that. The number of people that are idle, according to MBS, is the, the, that percentage is down by 40%. So everything is on the right, and this job board has a target to generate, to, to generate or create a minimum of two million jobs a year for the next 10 years. Now when you do that, the percentage we can, if you create less than two million jobs a year, I hear different people saying we we'll create one million jobs a year, um, that would do nothing because at least 1.8 million people come onto the job market every year. You need to create more than, so the work has started, a lot of progress has been made, you need to consolidate. This is not the time for change. And, and again, when you talk about um, SMEs, for example, um, we have, according to the last statistics, we have about um, 32 million, we have about 17.25 million MSMEs, employing 32 million people. This sector had never been looked at as a sector. And because of that, most of the youth, most of the unemployed, most of our traders, most of our micro uh, uh, business men and women had no support at all from federal government, from any state government. Therefore, when you look at it, they were, they were only, if you look at the statistics, only 8% of them access funding from institutions, from banks and all that. Most of them got, more, got their funds from family, from friends and all that. And, and that, that's why the average age is about 32 years, if you look at the micro, small and medium enterprises, because they have to uh, use their savings. Again, for the first time in the history of this country, we have come up with a program called the National Enterprise Development Program. Amongst that, there are a number of things we need to do, which we have done, started doing. One is to create the MSME Council, which brings together everyone that is involved. We treat that as a sector, and is chaired by the Vice President. The second thing is we have identified the eight barriers to growth and we're addressing each one of them. So for example, access to finance. The 220 billion, which CBN uh, has just announced is part of that solution. The council is making sure that that 220 billion reaches the microfinance institutions. There, there was no way uh, uh, re, re, uh, also reach the micro businesses and small businesses. You will see in the next two months there, but you've seen different states or your state, different states announcing, making money available to this micro. This was not possible before. If you see how many people have empowered, in each state under the program, Smeden has set up about 55,000 cooperatives, each from each local government. That is about 845,000 members. Each one of these will have access to funds, and we have access to business support services. The Youth Corpus is a program for Youth Corpus also. There's been full, the program, everything is on board, again, to support the job creation, but also to help grow the micro, small, and business enterprises. Today, everyone is talking about oil price, as if it should be news to us. It should, be not, it should not be news to it should not be news, or it should not be a new story to anyone. We knew for decades that we were relying on one commodity. We knew for decades that we were just exporting raw materials and importing finished products. We knew for decades that we were just exporting jobs outside this country by exporting crude oil. We knew that we were not supporting and doing anything about it. This is a government that for the first time in the history of this country has a plan called the National Industrial Revolution Plan, which is to diversify the economy and revenue sources. And it's not just having a plan which is integrated, which is holistic, which is comprehensive, it's that we have started implementing it. So when you hear about the sugar policy today, we were importing 97% of the sugar we consume as a nation. Today we have $3 billion going into sugar cane to sugar. By the time they finish in the next three to four years, at least 180,000 jobs will be created in this country. And most of them will be in states like Kebi, Kogi, uh, Adamawa, Niger State. Most, there are six of them in northern states of the Federation. I, I've gone to inspect the one in Niger, Niger State, done by flowermills. 
by the end of this year, they will start producing in the country. It is because of that we have the auto policy, where for the first time in the history of this country, we have farms like Nissan assembling in this country, Hyundai assembly in this country, Ford was here last week, Toyota is doing their due diligence, Peugeot, Volkswagen had left this country, they are back in this country, producing in this country. And the beauty of the auto industry, which is one of the highest employer of labor anywhere in the world, is that there are at least 2,000 parts in a car. Most of the parts will be produced by local SMEs. So there will be jobs for our graduates, and we will encourage them to do that. We're doing matching, matching them with some sort of uh, JV partners of, this, of these individuals. It's under this policy that we have the cement policy, which um, we were producing about 16 million metric tons in the country. Today, we have the capacity to produce 39.5 million metric tons. Today, Nigeria has become a net exporter of cement with, in ECOWAS across, across Africa. It is under this policy also that we have the cotton, textile, and garments policy, which is also new. We, in, in the past, focus on cotton and textile. You may recall that that sector actually accounted was second employer of labor in this country before. But today, we're extending it not just to texture, but to garments and to fashion design, tailoring, and all that. That policy, fully well implemented, in three years, we created about 1.7 million jobs. If you look at from cotton to fashion. It is under that policy today that we have managed to attract about $14 billion into the petrochemical uh, petroleum product sector. So for example, if the nine billion that has been committed to an integrated petrochemical plant is implemented to the letter by 2018, for the first time in the history of this country, we would no longer import petroleum products. We will actually become a net exporter of petroleum products. And most people that are importing, that are investing in fertilizer, urea, see this as not just for local consumption, but for exports. And we're not just talking about sectors, we're looking at sector enablers. In putting the infrastructure in place, the financing in place, the standard in place, the investment climate in place, the power, everything is being addressed. So it's the first time we did If we do that, Mexico diversified its economy in seven years. Most, it takes them 10 years. Lee Kuan Yew converted Singapore economy from a third world economy to a first economy. He was there for 30 years. Mexico did it in seven years. We have only done it, we have done it maybe in two, three years. You need to consolidate and finish it. You cannot move one step forward, 30 steps backward. When you talk about industrialization, there are a number of enablers uh, that are critical for the success of industrialization and the success of diversifying your economy, which is a must for us now. You need to have industrial skills, otherwise you won't produce things of the standard. You need to have the, uh, the, the quality and standard infrastructure. You need to have access to affordable finance. You need to have the right investment climate. You need to have, uh, you need to link innovation, technology to industries. These are all the areas that NROP addresses. You need to have the right infrastructure, meaning move the goods from farm to industry, from industry to market. And you need to have electricity power. All those things are important. That is why the president, in implementing the Industrial Revolution Plan, set up the Presidential Advisory Council on Industrialization. And the three key ministers in that council are the Minister of Works, Minister of Transport, Minister of Power, to let you know how important infrastructure is. And the arrangement we have with power for industries is that we're focusing more now on industrial zones, industrial parks. We have studied what other countries have done. It, the whole idea of saying free trade zone for export, that's not yes. We have the market here in this country. In ECOWAS, 300 million people. So that's where investment is coming to the country. So we're focusing more on industrial zones and industrial parks. That will make it easier for three things to happen. It will make it easier for power, Mr. Power, to direct electricity to this park 22-7. I have that assurance already. It will make it easier for us to have captive power 
in these zones, industrial zones. Already we've started implementing that. So we're looking at different systems. We're looking not just relying on gas, we're looking at coal to power, which China has done uh, successfully, many coal plants. We're looking at uh, LPG. I met with an investor here yesterday that are prepared, ready to move gas from the south, southwest to the north to supply power station in Kaduna and Kano. I've told them to extend it to Kano because of the textile industry. So we're looking at all those options. Uh, so before long, three, four years, all those things will be resolved. If you look at the level of investment coming into power, it's more than 50 billion. It takes three years, that's why you haven't seen the impact. But already, investors are taking advantage of the new policy of the government. Now, if you also look at what we are doing in terms of incentives, those who are able to actually generate their, their power, for example, so we look at the Wimcos, the Dangotes, all of them have their own power plants. We have incentivized them. So there's, there are tax incentives for it, which makes it economic for them to invest in power. Those are the things we need to put in place, which we have put in place. It's not a barrier. By the way, an investor takes a long-term view, not a short-term view. They know these issues are being addressed, will be resolved in the next two or three years, and they know that this is where the money is. When you look at return on investment, Nigeria was ranked number four in the world. Uh, that's because the money is here. The market is here, the money is here. And we just need to have consi con consistency in applying our policies. That is why continuity makes, uh, is so important, especially at this time.